Hey guys, welcome back to the second lesson and today we will be talking about induced drag. Let's get to it. To understand induced drag, there are two things you need to know. First, you need to understand what is the angle of attack and how it affects the plane. The angle of attack is the angle between the relative airflow and the wing. There is an imaginary line that runs from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing and this line is called the cord line. Make sure you remember this name. When the airplane changes its attitude like in the climb or descent for example, the angle between the cord line and the relative airflow changes as well and it creates an angle. This angle is called the angle of attack or AOA. This is the bloody angle. The other thing you need to know is that the component of left acts in a 90 degrees angle to the airflow. Okay, we now understand what is the angle of attack and how the component of left acts at a 90 degrees angle to the relative airflow. If it's not a right angle, it is a wrong angle. Let's explain the induced drag how it is generated, and how to reduce it. And just as a reminder, the information we explain in our lessons are connected and you would have much better understanding if you don't skip through the lessons. I will have the previous lesson linked up here and you will see them at the end of the video as well. Okay, back to our lesson. Let's get to it. Induced drag is a type of drag that is generated by the left force so it will always be there. You cannot get rid of it. We explained before how the air flows above and below the wing and that creates low pressure above the wing and high pressure under the wing. And this difference in pressure is the reason the plane lifts off of the ground. And here is the thing about pressure difference. Air flow on top of the wing tends to flow inward because the pressure on top of the wing is lower than the pressure around the wing. And vice versa, the air flow at the bottom of the wing flows outward because the pressure under the wing is higher than the pressure around the wing. So the motion of the air from the high pressure to the low pressure creates a spiral air flow at the wing tips. And this spiral flow called wing tip vortices. And because these wing tip vortices are flowing inward like we see here, they push down the airflow behind the wing, making it more inclined than it would be during a takeoff run. We refer to that inclined airflow as downwash. And when you compare the position of the left component before and after the downwash happened, you will see that the left component angle has tilted backward. The tilt of the left component backwards causes a drag called induced drag. Piece of cake! Piece of cake! Piece of cake! Okay, so how do we reduce induced drag? There are ways to reduce induced drag, such as having longer narrow wings, or what we call high aspect ratio. But that is not practical for most airplanes because lots of fuel is carried in the wings and having long narrow wings would limit the fuel that can be carried in the wings. The other way to reduce induced drag is winglets and what they do is redirecting the relative airflow and that causes a reduction in the wingtip vortices. So basically they make the wingtip vortices smaller and smaller wingtip vortices means less downwash and less downwash means smaller incline in the left component and smaller incline in the left component means less induced drag. There you go. That's it for induced drag. I hope you found this video helpful. The next video we will be talking about wave drag. Make sure you subscribe to follow up with me as I upload the lessons. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, write them down in the comments below. Make sure you watch the previous videos and I will see you next time.